Okay, everyone, welcome back to another prep talk video. In this video, we're going to discuss sixth grade math representing and ordering rational numbers, part two. The learning objectives for the second part of this unit include ordering rational numbers from real world context, although you'll really just be finishing up this teak and assessing and going back and clarifying some things that maybe were not clear the first time around. Then you will go into classifying whole numbers, integers, and rational numbers using graphic organizers. This is something that is new to the grade level, especially in the terms of integers because students have not dealt with negative numbers prior to sixth grade. And then finally, graphing points in all four quadrants using ordered pairs of both integers and rational numbers. And again, this is new to sixth grade. Students have explored this in quadrant one, but we will now be opening ourselves up to all four of the quadrants on the coordinate grid. As we take a quick look at the teaks for this second part of the unit, you can see that ordering a set of rational numbers has been tested nine times in five years. So that's a pretty heavy hitting readiness standard. 6.11a has been tested the least number of times possible for a readiness standard. It has only been tested one time per year the last five years. So while it is important, we know it's gonna show up on the test, it's maybe not as important as uh, ordering a set of rational numbers. And then classifying whole numbers, integers, and rational numbers using that visual representation has only been tested twice in the last five years, but our students typically do pretty well on this teak. And so if it shows up on the star test, we wanna make sure that they get that one question correct. As we get into classifying the difference between whole numbers, integers, and rational numbers, one way we can do this is by looking at a number line first. What we notice is that for whole numbers, these are just the numbers that we've been talking about our entire lives up until now, right? So our whole numbers are going to be the positive side of this number line right here. Well, then what happens? sixth grade came along and we introduced you to the opposite of the whole numbers or integers and so integers would be the next category and it would include both the positive and the negative whole numbers and so this right here would be the integers and then beyond that there would be a third category that would include all of those positive and negative whole numbers or integers and that would be called the rational numbers and the rational numbers are ratios they are numbers either positive or negative that can be written as a fraction or a decimal and so this can be a good visual for students to see early on so that they understand the differences between these three types of numbers this screen represents what can be a helpful filter for students as they are thinking through whether a number is rational, an integer, or a whole number. As they ask these questions to themselves, once they answer no, they know to stop. So for example, if I have the number, let's just say negative 14, can that number be a fraction or a decimal? Well, yes, it certainly can. I can write negative 14 as negative 14 divided by one. So it can be written as a rational number. Is the number a negative or positive whole number? Yes, it is a whole number and it is negative. So the answer to this question is yes. And then finally, is, whole num is uh, uh, the number a positive whole number? Well, no, it's not a positive whole number. So it's not a whole number, it is an integer. And so that is a helpful filter for students as they're going through and trying to decide which of the three categories a number would fall into. One suggestion on how you could possibly teach this idea is through an activity called concept attainment. The idea behind this activity is that you have several different uh, paper-sized posters, if you will, up around the room that just have numbers on them and then a classification. So for example, negative five, integer, negative 94, integer, 7.5, rational number. And as students are walking around the classroom, they take note of what types of numbers are integers, 
What types of numbers are rational numbers? What types of numbers are whole numbers? And then they talk with one another about what the characteristics of these numbers are, and they try to attain the concept themselves without you just straight up telling them. And yes, you might have to correct some misconceptions early on or redirect students into the ways uh, that you want them to think. But it's good for them to struggle through this themselves because it will really help with the retention of this concept. So I would really suggest doing something like this at the beginning of your lesson and just see how it goes and see how students do with this and see if they can come up with these definitions of these three different types of numbers themselves and then don't rescue their thinking just right away. Let them struggle through it and then come back together at the end and clarify some things that you see need to be clarified. Let's take a look at a couple of released questions for this teak. For the one on the left, we wanna know which Venn diagram shows the correct relationship among different sets of numbers and the correct placement of negative 648. You'll notice that in both of these questions, students have to use a so-called Venn diagram or other visual representation in order to describe these relationships. So as you're going through your lesson, make sure that you're not just using words, but you're actually using visuals to describe this relationship. What we notice for the number 600 and negative 648 is that it definitely can be written as a positive or negative fraction or decimal. So it is certainly rational. Then if we go to the next question, is it a positive or negative whole number? Yes. Then is it a positive whole number? The answer to that, of course, is no. And so this negative 648 should be classified as an integer. Well, letter F has that relationship, so that's a possibility. Letter H does not have that relationship, so that one's out. Letter G does not have that relationship, so that one is out. And letter J does have that relationship, so that is a possibility. But if you keep your eyes on J for just a second, you'll see that J has integers being inside of whole numbers. That means what they're saying is that every integer is also a whole number. Well, that's not true because we know that negative 648 is not a whole number. And so that one is not showing the correct relationship among the different sets of numbers. And so that would leave us with letter F as the correct answer, since this one correctly has whole numbers inside of integers inside of rational numbers. For the question on the right, what we notice immediately is that this question has all of its answer choices with the correct relationship. Whole numbers inside of integers, inside of rational numbers. So all I'm gonna need to do here is correctly identify each of the following numbers as one of these types. And so starting with 3.4, we see that that can be written as a fraction or decimal, but it is not a whole number. And so this is going to be a rational number. Negative two is a positive or negative whole number. So it's definitely an integer, but it's not a whole number because it's not positive. And so this is going to be an integer. Three satisfies all three of those questions, that filter that we saw on uh, the previous slide. And so this is going to be a whole number. And then finally, negative 1.2 can be written as a negative decimal, obviously, but it cannot be written as a negative whole number. So it is not an integer, it is a rational number. And so looking through the possible answer choices, what we see is that F is the only possibility. I wanted to bring this question up because I thought it was a little interesting. This Venn diagram shows the relationship between whole numbers and integers. We want to know which number would be located in the shaded part of the diagram, which we see in this case is the area for integers. Well, if we look at our answer choices, negative 1.7 is a decimal that is not a whole number, and so this would be a rational number, and h is a fraction not a whole number, and so that would also be a rational number so, since it is a ratio. We have two answer choices remaining, negative eight and positive 10. 
both of those numbers, well, let's, let's talk about this. Both of those numbers could be considered integers. However, for 10, we can say something actually even better that it is actually classified as a whole number because it is positive. And so even though it could technically go as an integer, it can actually be in the middle here as a whole number because it is positive. Negative eight could not go where 10 is because it is not positive. Negative eight would have to go in the shaded area as an integer because it is negative. And so letter G is the correct answer. As we move into TEK 6.11a, we see that students are going to have to graph points in all four quadrants using ordered pairs of rational numbers. Now that we have star 2.0 and graphing item types, this is a perfect TEK to ask a graphing question where students would be perhaps given an ordered pair and then have to plot that point on a coordinate grid so that they know exactly how to graph that particular point. But in the era of multiple choice questions, this had to be tested a lot of unique and different ways. And so as we look at this first question, we're given an ordered pair, negative 9.73 and negative 3.32. And we wanna know in which of the four quadrants is point Q located. And so some of the basic things that you're going to have to teach your students is first of all, how to identify which quadrant is which and of course we do this with roman numerals and so you're going to want to make sure that you're telling your students these quadrants in roman numerals not just with one two three four but with i i i i i i and iv those four roman numerals starting in the upper right and moving counterclockwise around the coordinate axis then we know in quadrant one that that's where all of the positive x coordinates and positive y coordinates live. As we move to quadrant two, that's gonna be the negative x axis and the positive y axis. Then in quadrant three, both our x and our y are going to be negative. And in quadrant four, that's where our positive x's and our negative y's are going to be located. I would highly recommend as a PLC brainstorming an anchor chart that you could have up in your room to refer students back to every time they need to remember this concept. This would be a basic example. You could maybe get more creative, but you definitely want to have something that students could look at. And so as we look at this point, what we notice is that we have a negative X coordinate and a negative Y coordinate. And so that means from the origin, I'm going to be moving left and down. And so that's going to be putting me into quadrant three. And so I see that my answer is letter C. This next question doesn't quite get to the verb of graph, but it gets pretty close, at least as close as you can get in a multiple choice format. Again, this would make a great graphing item type question or even a hotspot item type question on the new star redesign. And so as we look at this question, which point is best represented by the ordered pair two and negative 5.5? As a PLC, you're going to want to brainstorm creative ways for students to remember that the first coordinate or the X coordinate tells me that I'm moving either right or left. And so in this case, because we have a positive two as our X coordinate, we're gonna be moving two to the right and since we have a y coordinate of negative 5.5, we're gonna be moving 5.5 units down. And so if we move in those two directions from the origin, two to the right and 5.5 units down, that's going to put us at point W. The good news about questions like this is that the distractor options are really good. And so you'll be able to see very quickly what misconceptions your students are falling into. Are they thinking that the 5.5 means that I go right or left that many? Or do they not understand positive versus negative, meaning that positive would either be to the right or up, and negative would be either to the left or down, depending on where the negative 
is located. You're gonna be able to find that out based on what wrong answer the student picks and then be able to correct that misconception. Here is another way that this has been tested in the past. This would be a text entry or equation editor question now in the new STAR 2.0, but we want to know what is the value of the X coordinate of point P. So students would first of all have to identify where is point P and then what is the X coordinate of that particular point. And so going back to the X axis from that point is going to give us negative six. Now remember that in sixth grade, this is the first time they are answering with negative numbers. And so knowing that if this were a text entry or equation editor question, they would have to type in that negative before the six in order to get this question correct. As we talk about this question, I just wanna again remind you of the point of these prep talk videos. It's to, first of all, show you what's coming up in the curriculum, but it's also to um, look into the released questions and try to identify what is it that I'm going to have to teach students based on the way that this has been asked on previous STAR tests. And this is a great example of that because we might not think to teach it this way unless we look at this released item. You'll notice that the question here is very unique. It wants to know which ordered pair describes a point that is located four units to the left of the origin. Well, if I know that the origin is located here at zero, zero, which by the way, I'm gonna have to make sure that students understand that, that the origin is at the ordered pair zero comma zero, then four units to the left of the origin means that the X coordinate for this point is going to be negative four because that first coordinate always tells me whether I'm going to the right or to the left. And since I'm going to the left of the origin, that means that my X coordinate is going to be negative. And then look at how they word this for the second part of the question. They don't say, you know, above, they don't say positive or negative necessarily. They say two units below the X axis. So students are going to need to know that below the X axis is where all of the negative Y coordinates reside. And so below the X axis would be at negative two on the Y axis. And so if they were asked to graph this point, of course it would be right there. And the ordered pair that would represent that point would be letter G. And so again, this is why it's important to go through and look at all of the released questions, not just the ones that I'm modeling for you on this video, but all of the released questions so that you can know how has this been asked on previous STAR tests so that you can make sure that students know and are able to show those different ways for these TEKS. Here is another unique way that this question has been asked on previous STAR tests. Which ordered pair does not appear to be represented by one of these points? And you'll notice that all four of these answer choices have a rational number or fraction as one of their coordinates. And so as we look at letter A, five halves and negative three, students could think of that as being two and a half and negative three as a decimal so that they know on the x-axis to go to two and then half more and then on the y-axis go down three. Well, we notice that that point is located on this particular image and so that is answer choice A, which means that A is not the answer. Then for negative one and negative one and a half, students could think of that as negative one and negative 1.5 if that's helpful for them. And so on the x-axis, we know we'll be going one to the left and then 1.5 units down. Well, we notice that there is no point on this image for that particular ordered pair. And so that number does, or that ordered pair does not appear to be represented by one of these points. If we kept going just to check ourselves, what we would see is that for the next one, we could write this as 1.5 comma two. And so on the x-axis going to 1.5 on the right, and then up two, we see that that is represented on this graph. And so it is not the correct answer. And then finally, negative four 
and uh, one half we can think of as negative four and 0 0.5. And so if we go to negative four on the x-axis and then up 0.5, we see that that is represented on this image. And so that is letter D. And so again, just another way that this could be asked, notice that it is ordered pairs of truly rational numbers, meaning those fractions or decimals. And so we wanna make sure that we're putting problems such as this in front of our students. If you have any questions on uh, these topics that we've covered in this video, again, you can always reach out to us in the teaching and learning department, either to myself, Ryan Castle, or castle at mesquiteisd.org, or our fabulous middle school math facilitator who would love to help as well, Paris Scott, who can be reached at P. Scott, and then the number two at mesquiteisd.org. As always, guys, before you go, please be sure to fill out our survey so that we can know that you watch the video, and this will also help us to serve you better in future videos. You can also leave us a question in that survey, and we will answer it for you as well. Good luck as you finish up the ordering rational numbers unit and then begin your graphing unit by plotting ordered pairs. We hope this video has served you well.